Welcome to this video. In this video, I'm going to illustrate the main characteristics of classical conditioning and instrumental learning, which is also known as operant conditioning. Classical conditioning is a type of learning in which a stimulus requires the capacity to evoke a response that was originally evoked by another stimulus. In the example that I am giving, the conditioned stimulus, which is the bell sound or the tone, is paired by the meat powder to produce salivation, which earlier would have been would have evoked salivation within the absence of uh, the conditioned stimulus. The main components of Pavlovian conditioning, since it was uh, evoked by uh, Ivan Pavlov, the main components are the unconditioned stimulus, which is usually called the UCS, which is the food, the unconditioned response, in this case the salivation to food, the conditioned stimulus, which is the bell sound, the conditioned response which is the salivation to food you notice that the unconditioned response and the conditioned response are the same while the unconditioned stimulus and the unconditioned stimulus are different but after pairing these two they evoke the same or they elicit the same response that is salivation to food I will give several examples as I proceed in this video. Uh, before conditioning, you will notice that uh, the unconditioned response, which is the food, will produce the unconditioned response, which is salivation. That is, and before conditioning, not after, is stated here. Before conditioning, the bell sound alone, which is the a neutral stimulus, we will not be able to produce any response. So after ringing the sound the, or the bell, a dog will not do anything. But during conditioning, you ring the bell and present the food, eliciting the unconditioned response, which is salivation. That is after pairing the two, the bell and the food, you produce the unconditioned response, which is salivation. Then after conditioning, ringing the bell alone, which now becomes a conditioned stimulus, you'll be able to elicit the conditioned response similar to the one that was being produced earlier between the, in the absence of the bell, that is uh, salivation. After conditioning, the same response is elicited from the dog. And BF Skinner's instrumental learning or operant conditioning. This is also referred to as trial and error learning. And the procedure in operant learning allow active participation by the organism in deciding what behavior to engage in or which behavior to avoid. That is, the organism decides within its own environment as it operates with that, within that of environment the kind of behavior to produce. And the organism means operates upon its environment and observes the consequences of its operations. That is, in the end, the organism is instrumental in the learning process. So the onus is on the organism when we talk of uh, when we talk about operant conditioning. And then there are several types of instrumental learning. We have uh, positive reinforcement. That is reinforcement that occurs when a response is strengthened because it is followed by the presentation of a rewarding stimulus. Then we have negative reinforcement. This is the strengthening of a response because it is followed by the removal of an aversive or an unpleasant stimulus. And then we have punishment. 
where an event, an event that follows a response that weakens or suppresses the tendency to make that response. So you notice that in uh, positive reinforcement and negative reinforcement, there is a tendency to increase behavior or producing the same desired behaviors, whereas in punishment, there is a weakening or a suppression of that behavior after the response has been made. Now, I will give several examples as I proceed so that you will see the main distinctions between these uh, three. In this example, you will notice uh, positive reinforcement. This is whereby you add a reward following good behavior. In this case, a puppy is given a bone when it does good behavior. This increases behavior. In, in uh, negative reinforcement, you remove a deterrent after good behavior is established. In this case, you take off a leash when a puppy learns not to run away. That is, by removing this deterrent, the tendency is also to increase the behavior. Then in the extinction, you do not reward or otherwise encourage bad behavior. For example, ignoring a puppy when he barks needlessly. So in this case, you decrease the behavior. Then in punishment, you add a negative consequence following bad behavior. Well, that is like uh, tapping or spanking a puppy on the nose if he or she tries to bite someone. So this tendency to bite, these biting behaviors will decrease after the presentation of the punishment. I will, I will explain punishment further as I please. The techniques, there are several techniques of making punishment effective. One, this is applying the punishment immediately after the undesirable behavior is exhibited uh, or delays. Uh, if you delay, you weaken the impact of that behavior. In the previous example, whereby one is to spank a, a puppy for biting, if you apply this punishment after the biting behavior has been exhibited, there is a tendency that this will not be effective. And also using forms of punishment that are less severe is more effective. Severe punishments increase the occurrence of un unwanted side effects. That is, if you they are severe, they are unwanted side effects that may occur. And also, you have to make the punishment consistent. It has to be consistent. And you have to explain the reasons why the punishment has been given. And you also have to minimize the dependency on physical punishment since this tends to increase aggressive behavior. And also making available alternative responses other than the desirable ones. So all these uh, points are there to ensure that punishment becomes effective. There are several principles of behavioral learning, and these include the role of uh, consequences, reinforcements, negative and positive, as I have alluded to, punishment, as I have also stated, the schedules of reinforcement. In this video, I have not touched on this one. I expect you to research and read further on what we mean schedules of reinforcement this is where we talk of a fixed ratio and all the others the immediacy of consequences and extinction i have talked about extinction in the last slide as well as maintenance i expect you to to read on these issues so that you increase your understanding of uh, the principles of behavioral learning. Distinction, distinction between uh, classical conditioning and instrumental learning, there are several distinctions. The learning procedures in, are different. That is the way organisms learn. These are different. And in classical conditioning, a response which invariably occurs 
to an unconditioned stimulus becomes associated with and is elicited by another conditioned stimulus. When the responses are being produced by an unconditioned stimulus, in a sense, the organism is passive. And in instrumental learning, reinforcement depends on the organism's response. There is no unconditioned stimulus, that, like in the case of uh, classical conditioning. There are several issues that are different. A signal is placed before a reflex, that is in a classical conditioning. The main point here being before, and in operant conditioning, a reinforcing or punishing stimulus is given after after a behavior and classical conditioning was developed in Russia after by, by Paul, Ivan Pavlov and it was uh, in operant conditioning it was uh, developed in the United States it is known as Pavlovian while this is also is known as Skinnerian after B.F. Skinner and it is, as I was uh, talking earlier, it is also known as a respondent, while this one is also known, called instrumental conditioning, that is operant conditioning. Classical conditioning works with involuntary behavior, involuntary behavior like, uh, like um, salivation is in, uh, in, in uh, Pavlov's dogs. Whereas in operant conditioning, it works on voluntary behavior. In classical conditioning, the behavior is said to be elicited, while behavior is called is said to be emitted, that is in operant conditioning. And this is typified by Pavlov's dogs, Pavlovian dogs, and this one is typified by Skinner's box, which is Skinnerian, which is called the Skinner box. In terms of reflexes, under classical conditioning, these are inborn, you know, and uh, under instrumental, they are not inherited, but they are learned. Whereas here they are learned in classical conditions, they are inborn. Then uh, they are inherited as shown from birth. That is in classical conditioning and in conditioned list response. They are learned by the organism within its environment as it operates within that environment. And these are present in all individuals that is uh, in classical conditions, conditioning and in operant conditioning, they are not the same in all individuals. In the, in the case of uh, classical conditioning, salivation is basically the same in dogs with the uh, Talking of Russian dogs, Zimbabwean dogs, African dogs, European dogs, this is the same. Unlike in conditioned response, they may not be the same. An example of classical conditioning is uh, withdrawing the end when you touch the fire. That is typical classical conditioning. You withdraw your hand after touching a fire, whereas in conditioning, in conditioning or operant learning, standing in attention when you hear the national anthem. This is typical operant learning. You learn through experience, through different uh, learning situations. It becomes uh, operant, is operant learning or instrumental learning. So in a nutshell, operant conditioning is whereby the subject learns behavior by associating it with its consequences. In this case, in the example shown here, the dog would learn how to jump over the ring and get a bone or a goodie. After doing that several times, the dog would learn to, to, to do this behavior, whereas in classical conditioning, the subject learns to associate two unrelated stimuli with each other. In this case, the bell sound and the food to produce the same results, which is, uh, in this case, would be salivation. 
I hope this example in the previous examples that I've illustrated will be will enable you to know and understand this, uh, this phenomenon. Thank you for watching this video. May you please subscribe. I hope this will enable you to read the two refines for examinations and your studies. Thank you so much and may the Lord bless you. Thank you.